So J thread is going to solve a very big problem with the normal thread and it is really very really easy to use, okay? And it actually makes more sense than the normal thread. We'll see all those things in this video. So consider watching till the end. This is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Nuts video series on C++ multi-threading and this is J-thread topic. So before going there, let's see how a normal threading works. So we have this function which we will treat as a thread. So I am creating three threads, zero to three. So it's three threads getting constructed. The moment they are getting constructed, I'm pushing them into some worker vector here. And once they are created, you know that you have to join each and every thread before you actually hit this return zero. Why? Because if your thread is not finished before you actually finish running your main function, your actual program will get terminated. But the problem is your thread would still be there. And then we have to actually kill that thread. I mean, operating system will actually kill that thread. So it's not a good idea. So better you join the thread before you finish your application. So that was the actual pain. And that's what we are drawing here. You can see this, right? Iterating over the same vector and trying to call join on each and every thread object. This is Lambda function if you are confused. So this is a working code. Let me just compile this. It will compile. It got compiled. And if I will run this, it is running. It is just saying that I am worker thread number and all those numbers are printed here. So it's like, little funny here but yeah this is how multi-threading works right and let me tell you like why it is printing like this my thread number and then this number is missing and every number is coming here the point is when threading happens all the threads are actually racing to print these statements okay and there is no lock so this c out is actually making this whole difference. The point is, C out is telling, dude, I am busy with printing something. So the thread, which is actually trying to get the hold of STD out, meaning this output window, that time all the threads are blocked until unless one particular statement or one thing is actually printed without any issue. Otherwise you would have seen like I and this M would not be coming here. All the messy things, no. It is printing I am working thread number till this colon and then next thread is kicking in and that is also trying to print I am thread number something and next thread is coming. So there is a race and the first thread was actually not able to print the number and just before that some thread came and logged this STD out. So that's why you are seeing this whole mess up here. If I will run this again, you might see something different, right? See, now it is totally different. I'll run this again. It is totally different now. So this is a threading behavior. Yeah, so this is normal thread. Let's talk about J thread now. So J thread is very simple. You just have to say J thread, J here, J here, and J here. Now everything is J thread and I don't want any join now. Let me comment this and it will still work the same. Let me compile this again. If I'll run this, see it is printing the same way how it used to be. Now how it is working. Let's see that part. So J thread is as its name says, it is a join thread, meaning the moment it will go and try to get destructed, it will join automatically. Meaning if some object is there, we have this object, right? So we moved this T to some vector workers. This workers destructor will be called when it will hit this return zero, that time it will get destructed. And then only it will call join on each and every object because internally it will try to flush out all the things and this J thread object will get destroyed. The moment it is going to get destroyed, it will call this join if it is joinable. So first it will check if that thread is joinable. If that is, then it will call that join function like what we were doing here. So this is now automatically done when this is going to get destructed. It will call that threads object dot join at that moment when it is going to get destructed. Okay, so I'm telling this again and again. Let me give you uh, a brief example here. So if I will just print something here to do C out, I'll say hello there. That's it. And now if I'll compile, 
and if I will run this, where is that hello? Yeah, see, hello there is coming in between somewhere, correct? Because the point is, it is possible that when all the threads were created, few threads are still waiting to get this printed and the control was actually flowing away from here and that time it encountered this hello there and it was printed. If I will run this again, it may be at some different place. See, now I don't know where is that is. Okay, that is at the first place. Okay, this is expected. Now what I wanted to show you was, let me do one thing. I will put this vector in a scope now. So I told you, right? The moment it will go out of scope, that time it will join. Let's see. Now you might have guessed it. This hello world will, I mean this hello there would always come in the end. Now it won't get mixed up. Let me compile this. See, hello there is coming in the end. All these threads will be messed up, meaning it will come in mixed fashion, but this hello there will always come in the end. I'll tell you why. See, I'll execute many times, but it will always be there like this. Why? The point is, the moment it is touching this curly bracket, the vector, this guy, is getting destructed. And whatever is there inside that thread object, that is also getting destructed. And that time it is calling dot join on each and every object. So, if there is some join, it will not allow main program's control to go ahead. It will wait for that thread to complete and then it will go ahead, right? So here, every thread is waiting to finish. Then only it is coming here. That's why it is printing in the end. Cool, right? So we know that, okay, this functionality is working. And it is really a very big relief for the programmer because it was very hard to find a place where to put this join. Because the moment you join some thread, that time the thread's execution will wait for that thread to complete and then only it will go ahead. That's why it is actually waiting here, right? But sometimes you don't want to wait, you just want to go ahead. But then you have to be very picky where to put this join function. So now this case, you don't have to worry much because you would just take here like, okay, this thread is getting destructed. Then probably it is done execution. And if it is not, then it will auto, auto join there and then it will stop. So it is less of a hassle to use threading, especially join. And wait a minute, don't go anywhere. Actually, if you see, I am compiling with this option, C++20, right? So it is introduced in C++20 and later it is not there in C++17 or prior to C++20, okay? So if you want to compile this, put this option. Now we can remove this. I'll be very happy to see this guy going in the trash because now we don't need this guy, correct? So this program is also very small now and it makes so much sense that all the threads are finished, then only I will call return zero. Otherwise, I will wait. Correct? So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye. Take care.